What's up guys, we are back with another review and we are taking a look at something that I have really, really been looking forward to getting my hands on. And it's taken kind of like an act of Congress to actually get these things in hand because Walmart keeps delaying and delaying pre-orders. So we are finally taking a look at wave one of the Transformers Red line. So this is a Transformers Robot Enhanced Design. These are the non-transforming Transformers. Of course, this seems kind of like a controversial line for a lot of Transformers folks because they don't transform. But for somebody like me, this is exactly what I have wanted for so long. Articulated Transformers that are just in their robot modes because I don't really care about transforming and I never display them in alt modes anyway. So yeah, this stuff really speaks to me. So we've got Wave 1, Optimus, we've got Megatron, and we've got Soundwave. These guys come in pretty snazzy packaging. Uh, it's kind of like the opposite thing that we've got for Black Series because we've got an angled design, but you've got the figures in the window with this really big piece of artwork on the front, and then this window along the side that showcases all of their accessories. So uh, you, they're using that angled design to actually showcase a lot of the stuff that these guys come with, and I really like it. And in the back of the box, has got a red and black design motif with some rendered shots of the figure with a bunch of their accessories and everything they do. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, we've got our entire Wave 1 Transformers R.E.D. figures. So we've got Soundwave, Optimus, and Megatron. Two Decepticons, one Autobot in this first wave. And I gotta say, I have been very, very excited about the prospect of this line. I am very worried about its future just because of seemingly how controversial it is. But I gotta say, I'm having a lot more fun with these figures than I expected to. They do have some hangups here and there just because of kind of their blocky nature. But these are really fun. Like, I really have not put them down since I got them home. Granted, they are still very new to me as of this video, but... This is exactly what I have wanted in Transformers for a very, very long time. So, of course, take that with a grain of salt because I'm not a huge Transformer toy fan, but I love the cartoon. So this is something that I've really been looking forward to. So let's get started to see what these guys do. Uh, they are all similar yet very, very different. So we're going to take a look at each of them individually. Uh, Soundwave moves different from Optimus, who moves different from Megatron, because they have different construction in some ways. So we're going to start with the lone Autobot, and then we'll get to our Decepticons. So as far as moving this big guy around, he is kind of what I expected, while at the same time not in some ways. And one way makes a lot of sense now that I have them in hand. So you've got a head that can look up super, super far. He can actually look down a decent amount, too. Of course, he's kind of looking right at the top of his, uh, you know, cab there, but he can still look down a little bit. There is a cutout in the back of the head that allows him to go up really far. Really good tilt. I mean, probably more than you need, and then full rotation, of course. Arms go out at the shoulders. They are a swivel hinge, so they swivel up and down. This reminds me of the Super 7 Voltron figure, for comparison's sake. And then they rotate all the way around. There's no butterfly joint or anything like that. You do have a bicep swivel. We have a single jointed elbow on Optimus. Uh, they only go 90 degrees. You've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. These are kind of recessed in there, but they still uh, hinge pretty decently. There is no crunch on this guy, and for a minute I kind of wondered why, and then it's because of the fact that, well, I'll have to show you with, uh, with a picture, probably, because these things are actually really difficult to get open unless you've got, like, a knife on you. Uh, so he's got the opening doors here to reveal the matrix, so he can't crunch because there is, you know, moving parts in there. But he does have a waist twist. The legs go out all the way. Pretty good for a robot, I'd say. They kick forward, but they don't kick forward all the way because of the fact that he hits his, uh, I don't know, his robo-belt right away. They kick backwards a good bit. You do have a thigh cut. And then there are double jointed knees on this guy, and they are pretty wild, actually. They go super, super far back. I mean, that's that's almost further than it needs to go. It's not the prettiest joint, but it works really well. And then down at the ankles, he is definitely hindered because of, well, the box. So he does have rotation in there, if you can believe it, but it doesn't do anything. He's also got rocker, but it honestly doesn't really do anything either. It's a little bit, but not much. He goes backwards on the hinge, but he doesn't go forward at all. So he is limited. I'd say he's probably the most limited of the three, uh, especially depending on uh, how you want to, you know, 
pose him. But when it comes to like the legs, he's probably the most hindered. And then he shares the same hindrance that Soundwave does when it comes to the torso. So, I mean, he moves well enough and it's kind of what I expected because of the fact that they are so blocky and very boxy in their design. But at the same time, I'm not really upset about it. He moves well enough and I've had really no issues getting him into good poses here and there. Uh, I think he moves well enough and I I'm quite certain that in, in concert with Megatron's articulation, they'll be able to make some really well done figures in this because there are, again, a lot of different articulation schemes when it comes to these figures just based on what they have to do. So he's got the, uh, the opening chest and we sacrifice a ab crunch for that. You likely know what's coming though in that, uh, well, I wanted this figure because of the way he looks and because of the fact that there's no transforming gimmicks. So there's no, you know, grebling design or any of that kind of stuff all over him. He is very much a cartoon style of Optimus Prime. And this is what I've wanted. I've wanted an animation style figure. I don't want to have to transform my figures. And it's not because I don't like the transforming gimmick. It's just I don't care about it. I would do it one time and probably never again. So it's nice to be able to get something that doesn't have to take that engineering into, a, into, into effect. It doesn't matter here. This is just giving us Optimus Prime for the sake of Optimus Prime. And I think they did a pretty good job uh, on this figure, honestly. So you've got very much a, uh, a mostly unpainted figure. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of cast plastic and there are a few little aesthetic things that, that need to be pointed out on this figure. Um, the first of which is that there are some really weird like mold points on this figure, like right here uh, on the back of the legs on both of them, you can see like this kind of splotch and a swirl pattern on the plastic there. Uh, a couple of these figures have stuff like that. It's it's on the back side, so it's not a huge thing, but it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, he does have some paint. You've got yellow up here, you've got the silver, and then you've got the Autobot logo that's painted pretty nicely. But there is a lot of large, chunky cast plastic pieces, and I'm okay with that. It, it works as far as the figure goes. Uh, he's got the, the opening cab, like I, like I showed you previously, with those swiveling doors. They are a little tight. You know, I have to use something usually to pry them open, at least for now. Uh, the tolerance on there is pretty high. And in general, I just think he looks good. I mean, it comes down to the overall cartoon look and whether or not you truly want that in your figure, and that's, that's what I want. This is a very cartoony looking figure to me, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It's not super, super detailed when it comes to paint applications, but at the same time, he doesn't really need to be either. And then of course he's got the head sculpt up there, which does have a decent number of paint apps. You've got those kind of powder blue eyes and the silver mouth and the, uh, the crest on the head. And then the blue is just that nice Optimus Navy blue. So it's a really cool looking figure. Uh, again, it's very much what I wanted out of it when it comes to the aesthetics. Pretty much this entire line is what I wanted out of it when it comes to the aesthetics. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in the market for a action figure Optimus Prime that doesn't need all the extra bits because it has to transform, I mean, this is the look for you. Now, as far as accessories goes, Optimus is pretty well stacked. If anything, that's one of the big things this line has going for it so far is that, for the most part, all of these figures have a lot of stuff, and it's really good stuff, too. So we'll start with the the Matrix here. So this thing is a separate piece, and it pops out. You can just you put it in there. Of course, open those, uh, those doors, the windows, and you can pop that in. You've got the little slot for it. It does have a little bit of paint application on it as far as the orange and that little uh, green splotch in the middle, and it just sits there really nicely, and then you can just sort of shut it, and there you go. You're good to go. He does have a set of extra hands, so you've got fists on him right now. We have got hands to allow him to hold open his windows to keep the, you know, keep them open if you want to pose them like that, having the matrix exposed. So you've got a set there. You've got a right hand pointing finger, and then you've got a right hand trigger finger hand. So he comes with six total hands. We've got the Energon Axe, which this is this is by far my favorite Optimus Prime weapon. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, Energon weapons in particular really do it for me. Uh, so this guy is just done up in a kind of cloudy orange translucent plastic. It takes the place of a hand, so you uh, pop it out and put one on, and it is also articulated. It's got a hinge there. And then you've got his blaster. This is just done up with black plastic with a little bit of paint at the end, but it fits in his hand really nicely and it looks exactly like I remember it. So this is, this is pretty much par for the course uh, for the line. You get basically everything you need to really have a nicely kitted out figure. So you've got his matrix, you've got multiple hands, and you've got two weapons for this initial offering. I think he comes with a bunch of good stuff. It all looks really nice and it's very easy to swap in and out. Despite the fact that these windows are a little bit difficult to kind of pop open sometimes, Getting that matrix in is very easy and it stays in place once it's in there. 
Now for our Decepticon leader Megatron here, we do have a changeup when it comes to articulation. And like I said, they pretty much are all different from one another in some ways. So his head can look up a pretty good bit, not as far as Optimus, but still really good. He can look down as well. You do have a really serious tilt action and then full rotation. His arms go way, way out because they're actually like sort of cantilevered over top of the shoulder there. So you can see them pulling all the way up. You kind of sit on top of the clavicle of, the, of him. He does rotate. There is no bicep swivel or a butterfly joint on him, so you've just got the uh, the arm movement there. But he does have a rotating uh, elbow, basically. And it is also a single joint. So it's a single rotating elbow. And then you've got your hinges and rotation at the wrist. Same as Optimus, they are uh, kind of recessed in there. So that you do have a little bit of sacrifice movement when it comes to that, but he can hinge them decently enough. It hasn't presented a problem. One thing that he does have is a crunch. And he crunches pretty decently far, honestly. He doesn't go backwards, though. It's just a forwards crunch. And then he has full rotation at the waist. His uh, kind of pads over here are also hinged, so you can move those up. His legs go out further than Optimus. They kick forward, but not as much as Optimus, and they kick backwards quite a bit. You do have your thigh cut. He's also got double-jointed knees, but they don't go back as far as Optimus. Uh, well, actually, no, they're actually just as far as Optimus, aren't they? So that may look kind of ugly, but it does work. And then you've also got rotation inside of this boot on his foot, and he does have a little bit of rocker. Again, kind of like Optimus, it doesn't really do a whole lot. And then he does have hinge, so he goes backwards. And then he also goes forwards, and his does work better than Optimus, just because of how he's designed. It's able to kind of tuck up under there and then get it off the ground. So he does move pretty well. Uh, he is kind of what I expect a lot of the figures might be. You know, basically anybody that doesn't have to open their chest is going to be able to have some sort of crunch, I would imagine. And it works nice. Nicely. And again, it does move pretty well. The only real negative is that he can't go backwards. Otherwise, though, he is uh, very much similar to Optimus, but at the same time being different because his design lends itself to certain points of articulation that Optimus doesn't. Aesthetically, this is very much more of the same like with Optimus, though. So it's very minimal when it comes to paint applications. Of course, they are there, don't get me wrong, but there aren't a ton. It's mostly a varying shades of kind of gunmetal black and gray cast plastic with little bits of paint here and there. So he's got reds on the sides, he's got red, yellow, and blue in the middle, and then you've got some red in the elbow there. You've also got your painted Decepticon logo. Nothing really on the back as far as paint goes, but you do have some down here on the feet. And then you just got your normal kind of cartoon looking Megatron. He's got the big uh, kind of oversized cannon on his arm. And then you've got the, you know, the big kind of almost pipe basically is what it looks like as far as the figure goes sticking out of his back. So it presents a very unique look compared to compared to all the other figures. He They all basically stand out from one another because they are all so very unique. And there's not really much in the way of part sharing between these two. But I think they did a great job here. This looks exactly like what you think of when you think of cartoon Megatron. The head sculpt is really well done. Those eyes, he's kind of got a little bit of a mean expression on his face, kind of a furrowed brow. Nice paint applications as far as the red and the black for those eyes. And I'm just happy with the way he looked. He turned out really nice. Uh, again, his design lends itself to being a little bit more mobile than Optimus, but he very much exceeds uh, when it comes to looking like the source material. So they all very much stack up when it comes to being as show accurate as this line can be. And I think Hasbro did a really good job here. This, again, it's, it's more of the same. It's more of the stuff that I want to get. And then just like Optimus, he does come with a bunch of stuff too. So to start with, you've got two fists on him in the box. And then as far as extra hands go, you've got sort of this, uh, it's a left hand kind of open palm style pose hand. You've got a left hand trigger finger hand. And then you've got, well, it's more of a, actually, it's more of a gripping hand. It's just, it's not really a trigger finger. And then you've got a left hand pointing hand. Well, we've got my favorite hand, though, is the one where he's holding an Energon cube, and this is all sculpted together. So it's all translucent purple, and then, of course, the hand is painted. And this looks really great. This is one of my favorite accessories that he comes with, for sure. And then my favorite accessory is the Energon mace or flail. And this thing is just like Optimus. It's a, it's a, it's the replacement of a hand. It does not have a hinge, though. This is just a, a straight peg. That might be part of its downfall, though, because it is kind of heavy, and it will maybe sag a little bit. So you've got to watch your posing on this, but it does, however, look great. So he comes with five hands, he comes with the, the flail, and he comes with the cube. He is, just like Optimus, stacked on accessories. Last but certainly not least, we have my favorite of the bunch, though, Soundwave. So this guy is, again, different from the others. He's very similar to Optimus, but he's also not the same. So we've got a head that can look super far up, 
he goes down pretty good. You've got good tilt side to side. Of course, he's got the cannon on his shoulder and it does kind of get in the way a little bit, but you can rotate the head all the way around. This thing does rotate and I will say if he has one issue, it is this thing because it does not really like to stay in here. I feel like the peg is almost not big enough. I've almost lost it like 10 times since I've actually been playing around with him. Uh, I, you look at it wrong and it might fall off. You've got arms that go out at the shoulder and then they rotate. You do have a slight, slight butterfly joint in there. You've got a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows with some just ridiculous range on them. And then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. No ab crunch, of course, because he's got an opening chest like Optimus does. And we'll just take that off for a minute. See what I said? We've got a waist twist. Legs go out about that far. They kick forward, but not all the way. They do kick backwards a good bit. Thigh cut. You've got double jointed knees again. And we've got rotation at the ankles, full rotation. So you've got rocker as well. And he goes much, much further than the others because he has that opening over here. So he can actually uh, pivot at that ankle pretty nicely. And he goes backwards and forwards uh, pretty good. So he has a little bit more range than the other two figures pretty much everywhere, except for the abs when it comes to uh, comparison to Megatron's crunch. I'd say by far though, if I had to pick, this is, this is my favorite as far as articulation, not just aesthetics because he does move really well. The little butterfly joints do help the double jointed elbows help on this guy a little bit more as well. So he is, of course, similar in a number of ways, but also very unique at the same time. Visually is where this figure wins it for me overall, just because this is exactly what I think of when I think of Soundwave. I mean, there's really not much here that I think I'm missing or something that I wish I had. It just looks like Soundwave to me. So all of like the piping around the cassette player, and you've got the yellow down here on the vents, all of the gray patches as far as like the buttons over here, and then just that navy blue color with the gray accents. It makes me think of Soundwave, and he looks fantastic. The only thing that I truly have an issue with is the cannon up on his shoulder because it's just really loose and you know i barely touch it and it'll fall off i don't maybe mine's a little messed up maybe it doesn't sit in there correctly hopefully it's not an issue but it's not one that's a truly a big deal you know maybe a little dollop of glue or something might tighten it up slightly and then he of course does have a play feature so you can push this button and he actually has an eject button on his chest so this is why he cannot crunch so you've got the opening uh cassette deck there and with the decepticon logo on it and you've got that button which is fantastic. I'm really happy that it works. I was surprised to see that it actually worked. I thought it was just for show and that you had to pry it open, but it does work really well. And then you've got the head sculpt up here, which looks tremendous. So you've got those kind of neon red orange eyes with the gray accent around the mouth and then that navy blue top. It's again, just kind of classic cartoon sound wave and it looks fantastic. He goes so well with Megatron and he's going to look fantastic on your shelf for sure. I mean, the only thing that we have to truly talk about when it comes to the visuals on this guy and the rest of the line in particular, and we'll get to it, is size. So we are going to do some size comparisons to see what these guys look like next to some other figures. It might be a little bit jarring, but uh, that might be the one true hang-up that a lot of folks are going to have. But as far as the visuals go, the sculpt, the paint, I am very much here for it. I think Hasbro knocked this one in particular right out of the park. And then for Soundwave's accessories, he does not have as much as the rest, and that's really okay. I'm not so sure that I'm truly missing anything with him. So he's got two fists on him in the box. You've got a, it looks like a trigger finger, but it's not. It goes on his left hand. This is an eject button hand for the, the uh, cassette deck, so you can actually have him pose where he's pushing the button. And then you've got a trigger finger hand for his gun here as well, which actually has a decent amount of paint on it as far as all of these little red accents all over it. This looks really fantastic. Very happy with the sculpt on this. Very unique uh, compared to some of the other stuff we've gotten. And then, of course, you can pop that open and we do have a tape. Now this of course does not transform or anything like that. It's just for show, it's just a tape. I would love to see if there's a way to maybe get a few more of these just to sort of set a scene when it comes to which of his little buddies you want to have in his chest. But I love the fact that it's not just something that is sculpted in there or painted in there and that it's a separate piece. It works really well. You will hear it rattle around a little bit when you move him, but it sits nicely and it's not gonna pop that door open. The only way you're getting that out of there is by pushing the eject button. There's a little arm in there that will pop it open and I'm really, really happy with this. A lot of paint on this as well. And all of those details are sculpted. It's not just paint. All of that stuff is actually sculpted into the plastic. So he doesn't have as much stuff as Megatron or Optimus, but I'd say he has some of the coolest stuff, especially when it comes to that tape. 
And like I mentioned, here is a size comparison. So this is definitely, when it comes to the look and the visuals of these figures, an area where I think people are going to have maybe not necessarily an issue, but some concern whether or not they truly want to buy this line. Because we know that Transformers don't really scale in many ways with anything, because they should be so much larger. You know, the only other thing that really works are like the Toys Alliance ones that are humongous. But this line isn't meant to really scale with anything. They are kind of their own thing. So we've got a G.I. Joe next to him, and we've got a Marvel Legends. Now, Soundwave is basically the same size as the other two, so there's not really re any reason to compare them. They are basically all the same size of figure, and they are basically true six inch figures. They don't really scale, they're just meant to be this particular size. So he does look small next to a lot of things. Um, well, here he is with a Ghostbuster, and you can see that the Ghostbusters, which of course are small for their own line, they're even smaller than Soundwave, so uh, he's not exactly tiny. He's still got some size, and these guys are kind of beefy and blocky, so that works really well. And they, st they stack up pretty good if you want to have them just be, I don't know, regular figures that happen to coincide with some of your other lines. But you need to go into this expecting that they're not going to scale with, with much of anything. And then for maybe a couple things that aren't Hasbro, just to give you an idea, here is something that is larger. So here is a Filmation uh, Skeletor. This is the old Mattel one, so you can see Soundwave is dwarfed by that. And then here he is with a NECA Cartoon Turtle, so another animation-style line. And you can see that, again, nothing to scale there. He's just simply taller than Raph. So there's not really much to compare with in terms of scale on this line. You need to buy into this if you truly want them, assuming that they're not going to scale, that they're going to be their own thing. And if you want to put them in with your six inch figures, they're going to look relatively okay as far as scaled robots that are human size, but they aren't going to fulfill the need of being big figures that are transformers that scale with anything else. It's just not meant to be. That's not what this line is for. I'm personally okay with it because they can be their own thing. And I think they do look pretty cool with certain other lines, like mixed in with, mixed in with turtles. I think they'll be pretty cool. Mixed in with Joes, they might work pretty well also. So there is, again, a huge size difference discrepancy between what a Transformer might need to be, but they work pretty well overall. So at the end of the day, I am, I mean, if you can't already tell, I'm really happy with these figures. They aren't perfect by any means, and I kind of knew that going into it. They all have some kind of weird articulation quirks just because of how they're designed. Two of them don't have ab crunches. They have limited range because they have such massive legs, or they have big boxy ankles, stuff like that. But they look so good, and they move well enough for how articulated they are. They have a great deal of accessories. They've got the gimmicks like the eject button or the opening windows for the Matrix, and a lot of cool accessories. You know, you've got the Energon effect pieces, you've got the cassette, all kinds of stuff like that. And again, I've really wanted something like this. I really wanted a line of non-transforming Transformers just to fulfill the need of having something that looks cartoon accurate without having all that stuff all over it. None of that greebling effect, none of that, uh, none of the kibble, basically. So I'm really happy that Hasbro came out with this. I'm really hopeful that this line does continue because I am very much on board for this. And I think if you're interested in this type of thing, you won't be disappointed. It's a really fun set of figures and I think it's a pretty strong start to this line. So that's going to do it for this look at the Transformers R.E.D. Wave 1 figures. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.